Chapter 8 By 10 o'clock the next morning, Teresa was going on a rampage trying to get a hold of her sister. When Cece wouldn't answer her phone after the fifth call, Teresa turned to her grandfather for help. Well, at least she tried to. Even her grandfather was unavailable. In all of her frustration, she forgot about her first meeting and was promptly chewed out by her boss. She knew for sure that it was definitely a Monday. Eight o'clock rolled around and finally Cece called her sister back. Dude, what is up with all of the missed calls and voicemails? You had to know I would be passed out from last night's get-together. It sounded like it was more than a get-together. Are you trying to get yourself killed? I said I was fine and not to worry. You need to get a serious grip. No, you need to get your life in order. You are really crossing a line here and I am willing to reel you in and give you the help you need. I don't need your damn help or that so call or that so-called precious God you serve. So don't call me again. Cece cut the call off and left Teresa fuming. God, if you are listening, you really need to do some serious work in her. I know she doesn't want your help, but someone has got to get a hold of her before it's too late. Teresa waited for a phone call, a bolt of lightning, or any other kind of noise or movement, but nothing happened. She finally sat down on the couch, bowed her head, and started to pray out loud. Lord, I come to you today to give you my sister. You can see that she is a troubled soul, Lord. I know that I can't force her to do or to believe in something that she refuses to, but I also know that I can't stand back and watch her hurt herself. Please, Lord, I am begging you to lay your hand on my sister and draw Satan from her. You know my heart, and you know hers. You know we are cut from the same cloth, and that she is only being rebellious for fun and attention. I pray for your guidance, and that, perhaps, you could work through me or someone else to reach her. I know you would never let me slip into a life like this. Please lead her to get out while she can. I thank you and I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. When Teresa's phone rang, she jumped and Swizzle ran out of the room. Randall was phoning her for some reason. She asked, or she answered, and they spoke for about a half hour. She told him of her predicament, and he told her that something had told him she needed a friend to talk to. This hit home even more to her that God was nearby, but she was still not finding any peace where her sister and her father were concerned. Later that night, she chose to switch up her nightly routine a bit and even played some music while getting ready for bed. She may not become the wild woman her sister wanted her to be, but she could still have fun in her own way. Even Swizzle came around and took in the view of her owner dancing like an idiot. It made her smile for once because Swizzle was generally hard, a hard cat to please. This time there was no checking her phone. Teresa finally allowed herself to doze off and enjoy a deep sleep. And when her alarm went off at 7.30, she stretched and felt almost brand new. Almost being the key word. A look in the bathroom mirror made her think otherwise. I'm such an odd-looking girl. My sister may have at least one thing right. I have the business girl look down to a science, but God loves me for me, and that is all that matters. Teresa set off on a new morning routine and raced into work a little earlier than normal. The firm where she worked at was located in the middle of downtown Baltimore. She worked in the marketing department and had to stay on top of all things new and improved. It had taken her a few years to get to this particular department, but once she made the leap, she never looked back. Today was a very important day, as her boss was going to be training a new business partner, and Teresa stood a chance of being bumped up again to an even better position. Miss Teresa Banner, I see that you are reliable. You have only missed one meeting recently. I remember calling you about that. I see that you have also worked overtime and even covered for some of your co-workers when the need arose. That is correct, Mr. Walters. I have a position available that would make you head of the marketing department. Would you be interested in this position? It was all Teresa could muster to hold her back her excitement. Yes, sir, I would be delighted to take on this position. Now, I will have to speak to some 
people and weigh in on some other possibilities, but right now, Miss Banner, you are looking like the perfect candidate for this job. That means a lot to me, sir. I have been praying about this for some time now. You pray? Hmm. Please keep your religion out of my business. As I am sure you are well aware, business and religion don't mix. I would be pleased to do that, sir. Whatever you request, I will be glad to oblige. Well, that is all for now. Please enjoy the rest of your day and keep up the good work. And you have a great day, too, Mr. Walters. Teresa walked away with a beaming smile on her face. She was finally gaining some respect at her work and had possibly set things in motion for an old friend to turn to God. Now all she had to do was focus on her sister. When she arrived home, she was still celebrating the meeting she had with her boss. Swizzle felt her owner's excitement and gave a purr of approval. Teresa opened a bottle of wine and enjoyed herself. She chose not to share the possibility of her getting a better position at work with her grandfather until she had something set in stone. She prayed and gave her praises to Jesus for something going right in her life for once. Now all she needed was for the good news to keep coming. Too bad some things don't work out the way we plan them to. The cold rain that came on the 5th of December had Teresa shivering as though it were a blizzard out instead. Since the weatherman had really predicted snow, she was certain that this rain was some kind of omen. She was walking to her car after another meeting with her boss. It had been only a few days since the last meeting, and the cold rain in addition to the meeting left Teresa feeling depressed. He didn't want me for the position. He had sounded so hopeful when we first spoke, and now here I am. Not only am I not the head of marketing, but I am also bumped back to where I started five years ago. So much for things looking up in my miserable life, and to think that I had worked so damn hard. Teresa made her way back home and popped a TV dinner in the microwave. She tried to find something good to watch, but to no avail. avail. Even locating a good radio station was a waste of time. By six, she was starting to doze off and just gave in and went to bed. By ten, her phone played its music once again, and guess who the caller was? The one person she had been waiting to hear from all along. Teresa had to take a second glance at the clock. Hello? I don't even get a proper greeting. God, I am not up for this right now. As you can plainly see, I am striking out down here in more ways than one. I see what is happening down there, but do you know what is happening up here? I can only imagine. I heard the angels bowling earlier. I hope my mom was a part of that because she loved her bowling. Perhaps that's what I should take up. Mom always said that bowling had helped her to work out her frustrations when times got tough, and it also helped to keep her social. Would you really like to know what is happening up here? Yes, sir. Please tell me what I'm missing out on. Your mother and grandmother are enjoying themselves up here, although they see what you are going through, and that is why it rained when you left work. The angels were crying for you. What your boss did was wrong. It was, but at least I still have a job. I am thinking he made his decision because of what I said about praying. I'm not happy that my boss would go this route, but what can I do? Yes, that is exactly why he chose to handle things like he did with you. You did the right thing by staying calm in there. I saw that you were extremely upset, but I'm so proud of you for just smiling and walking out. I'm not ashamed. I hope you know that. I wanted to scream and carry on, but I knew that I still had a job and I didn't want to risk losing it. I know, and I am grateful for such a wonderful and dedicated child. I'm really worried about my sister, and I'm still wondering about my dad. Keep praying for your sister. I am watching over her. Don't ever stop believing that. What about my dad? Has anything changed? Is he still stuck in between heaven and hell? Your dad's soul is still in anguish. I don't know how to tell you this, but he may never break free. But, but I thought that my prayers would help. I thought finding his loved ones at peace would help. I'm not sure how to explain this to you. I know this isn't easy to hear. Even if your sister got straightened out, I don't see your father being freed. Some things are just beyond our capability of understanding. But I had so much hope. I know, but your father is still too far gone. He won't ask for help, and he won't look to the light. I'm going to keep praying for him. I would never suggest otherwise. Like I said, though, his soul is so tortured, he won't ask for help and he won't forgive himself. 
I hope he knows that I still love him. I will never give up on him because he never gave up on me. I have prayed and forgiven him for committing suicide. That's the best thing you can do. I'm sure that he is grateful for your forgiveness, but he just can't forgive himself. I will let you get back to sleep. Please remember to keep praying for your sister. She needs you more than she is willing to admit. I know and thank you for calling me. I'm lost when you don't call me for a while. This won't last forever, child. God, why did you call me in the first place? I will call again soon. Good night. Teresa felt a sense of peace come over her, and yet she was still frustrated. She found herself not only upset over her father, but also wondering why God chose her. Her only hope was that she wouldn't let him down. Cece stopped by on Christmas Eve to visit her sister for a while. Upon answering the door, Teresa almost fell over from shock. Her sister stood before her wearing black leather boots, sporting a tattoo, and was dressed like a goth. The bottle of wine she was holding was either a gesture of apology or a bribe, bribe of some sort. Teresa chose the apology theory out of the two. So, sis, are you going to let me in, or am I going to have to celebrate from out here? Come in. I'm just in shock is all. Shocked over what, exactly? Your wardrobe, the tattoo, and is that an eyebrow piercing? Perhaps coming here was a bad idea. I can see you are not thrilled to see me. It's not that. But this isn't you. Then evidently you don't know me. I have changed since finally breaking free from our stuffy family. I may not have been raised with the Lord's word, but our grandparents definitely knew how to be a buzzkill. I wasn't even going to come here, but I thought that I would give it another shot. I thought being sisters and all meant something to you. So you really think this is who you are? This is the C.C. Lee banner that mom and dad worked so hard to raise, right? And yes, being sisters does mean something to me. It means that I have a right to want to look out for you and make sure you are okay. It means I am allowed to discipline you when I see you are crossing a line, and with me being older, well, I can see where that would really anger you, but it is just the way it goes. Hey, don't bring our parents into this. Isn't it enough that this is our first Christmas without them? And with Cece's question, a silence fell between them. Teresa finally spoke up. And Grandma, too, or did you choose to cut her out? She and Grandpa may not have let you run wild, but I know for a fact that they did let you have your space. How else would you have gotten dope into the house? I have my ways of getting around things and people. I have no regrets, and I am grateful to be out from under the thumb that you would have put on me. I love you and only want you to be safe. Is that too much to ask? I'm old enough to make my own decisions. Even at almost 23, I know what makes me happy and whom I want around me. Evidently, you are not someone who should be in my life right now, or maybe ever. Please don't leave, CC. I have been praying for you, and I know that there is hope. You just have to trust me and know that I would do anything to help you. I don't need help, not from you, Grandpa, or God. I will never believe in him, and I have lost all faith in you. As of right now, you are no longer my sister. Goodbye. With that, Cece left Teresa and never looked back. She still had the wine bottle gripped tightly in her hand, and Teresa's only prayer at the moment was that her sister wouldn't drink and drive. By three o'clock, Teresa was struggling to sleep and waiting for her phone to ring, but nothing came through. She had called her grandfather after her sister left, and he said he would try talking to her. This was one of those times when she needed her mother the most.